Yes, it's the Beery Idiots. We're a bit late. It's three o'clock. Welcome live to Belgian Beer Week. Belgian Beer Week show. The Belgian Beer Week show. The Belgian Beer Week show. <laughs> and Belgian Beer Week starts to, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow, 26th. It's already tomorrow. To the 28th. And I'm here. I'm Ahmed Elliman. And I'm here with Bas. Bastian Bailly. And Dieter Proust is sitting over there, yeah. but he'll be, he'll be coming in online. And we have some lovely participants coming by now and then for interviews here and around the world. Because this year, Belgian Beer Week goes international. International. <laughs> but of course, our core is Belgium. And it's about we celebrate bars, brewers, and Belgian beer culture. On tap, it's about friends, it's about visiting bars, whether they're traditional, brewers, whether they're craft or not. Uh, and this year, what kind of cities in Belgium do we have? We have... Uh, we have Antwerp, we have Ghent, we have Brussels, we have... Namur. Namur. We have Liège. Uh, we have uh, and some Leuven. Bru yeah, Bruges I already mentioned, I think. Yeah. Uh, and Leuven as well. Yeah. I think that's about it. Well, we have some other outliers in various cities, like in also Dam. Essen. In Dam. Essen. Essen, because in Dam a whole festival is going to be there. But we're going to talk about this and much more about the events and the people and the participants, and some will be dropping by. We are actually here at Le Barbateur in Brussels, who is one of the big participants. Along will also come by the Kevin and Cedric from uh, Brussels Beer Festival, yeah. which ends our fantastic Belgian Beer Week. We have uh, teamed up with them. Uh, so let's talk a bit about Belgian beer culture and what it means, because this year we're also featuring the Belgian beer museums. And uh, just remember what part of the culture is Belgian Brewers Day, which on the 2nd of September, which is uh, the week after next, uh, where of course St. Arnaud uh, and the blessing of the beer, and don't miss that because we at Beer Edits, we film it every year. I go into the church at St. Gadul and we film the blessing of the beer. It's quite an amazing <laughs> sight. It's uh, put on by the uh, uh, Federation of Belgian Brewers and the Knighthood of the Brewers Paddle. Right, and here we go. We have some visitors <laughs> coming by very soon, and we'll be talking with them. As we know, Belgium is the, was the birthplace of the patron sa saint of beer, Saint Arnaud. Uh, the story was he was born in Soissons uh, in the Brabant in the 11th century. He was a monk who later became uh, the Bishop of Flanders. And the story is that, like many monks, he was a devoted brewer who urged local peasants to drink beer instead of water for their health, because the water was so bad and rotten. That's you know? why they invented beer, I think. Yes, exactly. Yeah. A little alcohol beer, of course. Yeah, of Even course. kids drank it. It was like 1 or 2 percent. It's like uh, the table beer. Yes. Beer it used to be fed to uh, Belgian students at one yeah. point. Probably. Right? Uh, yes, <laughs> probably. <laughs> the, uh, the annual celebration, as I said, is on September the 2nd. It's held at the Cathedral of St. Michael, St. Gouda in Brussels. So if you're around, please go. And this year we're featuring a number of museums. The Brussels Museum of the Goes, the Scarbeck Museum of Beer, which is around here. The Museum of the Belgian Brewers, those are in Brussels. Of course, the Brussels Museum of the Goes is very famous because it's in Cantillon. Um, then we have the Lambic Visit Centers, one of my favorite museums because uh, it really is uh, a very modern place with a film room and they really show you how Lambics and Gerzes. I've never been made. there. It's a fantastic place. You I should, should do a go beer next trip. Week. I you should go next week. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they have a lot of things on actually every time and uh, you should come by on a Beer Idiots uh, road trip sometime yeah. when we visited there. Probably. But uh, no, it's. Uh, it's worth visiting. Uh, and the other one I really love is uh, the Hop Museum in Popperon. Is Am I Popperine. saying it right? Popperine. Popperine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still yeah, learning yeah. Flemish yeah. from these guys or Dutch. 
Uh, that's a lovely, lovely little museum. I really enjoy it. It's really nice to go, to go, uh, hold on. It's really nice to go uh, during when uh, the beer festival is held there. And it's around the corner from a very macabre uh, exhibit, a bit of history. It was World War I, which was the last hanging place for British Army deserters. You already been there as well? Yes, yeah, yeah. And what do you see? A lot of pops? Or? Uh, well, uh, how do you say the name of the city? Popperinge. Popperinge. Popperinge is the hops capital of Belgium. So all around is hops fields where the remaining ah, hops see, farmers of uh, Belgium, hence the hop museum. And then you have And the they hops. also have a hop parade. Yes, every year. And we hope one day to have a float there as beer idiots with our hops and... Uh, a wagon. A, wa a little, well, a car <laughs> with, dressed with some hops and we'll have some hop hats. If you go on, by the way, if you go on the Belgium Beer Week site, that's... www.belgiumbeerweek.be Right, you will see a list of all these yep. museums and a bit of a description of what they are and about the heart of passion. Uh, Do they also have a mishop? Yes, and we hope to have a mishop <laughs> for the beer idiots. The beer idiots hop. Bring her on. <laughs> yes, we're trying to convince her. <laughs> and you know who. Hannah. Also mm -hmm. one of the founders mm -hmm. of Belgian Beer Week. Uh, so then we have the Musée de Beer Belge, the Bosher Brewer Museum, the Snook Brewery Museum, Maison Lef, which I've actually visited and is really, really fantastic to visit. It's on top of a hill in Dinant, uh, really massive. You can spend a lot of time going through there. And the beautiful part is at the end, you go outside in their huge garden overlooking Dinant and the river. And, it's nice there. Uh, and yeah. you can just have, uh, you get two free lefts, uh, and you can buy some cheese. And I could spend all, all afternoon over there. Uh, there's Beer Museum Rot and the Bruges Beer Rot. Experience. What's the Beer Museum Rot? Uh, you asked me, but I'll have to, we'll talk about we'll those talk about later. 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 Um, so since we have uh, anything else to add about what you felt that we did, you know, this year, that it's the third year, and uh, how did it go? How did we? Well, it was a rough start, I think, but actually uh, we have uh, very nice venues, and I think it's also important to notice that because we already named the cities uh, in Belgium, Yes. but I think it's also important we're actually very international this year. Uh, a lot of thanks also to Tourism Flanders for that. Yes, Tourism Flanders helped us to go international. And by that we managed to get in the UK, in Italy, in Spain, in Poland, in Brazil, in Norway, in Hong Kong, in Germany, in Austria, in Estonia, in Korea, and South even Korea? China, in South Korea, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> and, and even China. Yeah. So uh, I think we managed, yeah, quite a nice list of, of venues and actually also with the events. I'm, yeah, actually really proud about it, yeah. Okay, Cedric, uh, how you doing and uh, what are you up to today? I'm fine. Trying to relax a little bit before going back to work uh, tomorrow because yesterday was the first birthday of the La Mule, right. just uh, next to here. So I was there and uh, then getting ready for the big Belgian beer week and then uh, the Brussels beer fest at the end. Right, and Cedric runs uh, basically uh, Belgium's most amazing French a website, magazine on Belgian beer. Can you tell us a bit about how you started it and why and how you became involved in Brussels Beer Fest? Sure. So um, beer.be actually started uh, 10 years ago. So we celebrated uh, this birthday uh, this year. Uh, I joined in seven years ago when I was still a student in journalism uh, here in Brussels. And actually I was willing to write uh, about beer and craft beer which was not something that was quite common back in the days. And uh, I just sent uh, an email to David, which is the other uh, co-editor on uh, beer.be. And uh, basically he said, yes, you can join the team, write for us, and then we will see how things are going to evolve. And then uh, quickly we began to act like a team. 
and now we are still the two, huh? so it's still me and David, and we are managing beer.be. We are the only French-speaking uh, website about beer in Belgium, uh, which is quite big. Uh, and we focus on uh, writing about news, tastings. We have a calendar with all the events in Belgium as well. And we do, do all that in French and, uh, and that's it, yes. Yeah, no, it's uh, quite an amazing site. And really, if you want to keep up to date, it uh, differs from the beer units in that we interview. We're, we're not newsy in the sense that we cover news, but uh, Cedric is really good in covering daily news, we use them to keep up to date on what's happening, the changes in the situation. And tell me, Cedric, uh, for Belgian Beer Week, I know you've teamed up with a few things. Your interest is, I think last year you gave an archaeology talk that was super interesting. That got us, gave us the idea to really focus on museums and things and try and yeah. include a bit more culture. Well, what are you doing during Belgian Beer Week? And of course, you're now helping out with the Brussels Beer Fest, and we'll talk to Kevin about that. But mm -hmm. What kind of events do you are you holding? I know some of it's with Latana, for example. Yeah, sure. Uh, so last week, I indeed, uh, when we participated to the Belgian Beer Week, uh, actually it was the first uh, archaeology and history class that we made with uh, Beer.be, which was kind of a first chapter, meaning that we started in uh, prehistoric ages and then going through early medieval times. Uh, focused here in Europe, so we are uh, talking about you know people living in Belgium and this kind of stuff. Um, it was a big test for us, and it was quite a success, meaning that we still do this course from time to time. Uh, and we have a second part that is also uh, ready um, that I did like I think maybe one or two months ago, which is uh, starting from Middle Ages and going through the Industrial Revolution um, in Europe. And this year, I was more focused uh, on the Brussels Beer Fest, as Beer.be is now a part of the organization of the festival, meaning that I was trying to create links between all the brewers coming for the festival to do something before the festival with the Belgian Beer Week in Brussels. So that's why uh, I have an event coming with uh, Latana, run uh, through uh, Valerio. So it's an uh, Italian restaurant in the center of Brussels. And basically on Friday, just before the festival, we're going to have uh, the full team of uh, Gravity Brewing. So it's a brewery from uh, Budapest in uh, Hungary. It's the first time they, they go abroad. It's the first time that uh, we will have their, their beer in Belgium and in Brussels. They will have some release that is fresh, new and exciting. And so the, the, the whole team is going to Latana and we're going to pop up some bottles, do some pairing, but more like a fun exercise. And then, you know, eat pasta, open uh, nice bottles and, uh, and share a moment together just before the festival. Excellent. And what else can you tell us about uh, any other events or that's the main one? That's the, the main one I was uh, managing, mm -hmm. meaning that there are lots of events if you look. Uh, almost uh, every craft beer bar in Brussels do a tap takeover. Of course, you have also events in Hien, in Leuven. Um, so it's, it's really crazy, uh, especially that this year uh, I've seen that you have also a lot of events in uh, other countries yeah. uh, for the Belgian Beer Week. I've sent messages to my friends in Hong Kong, in China, saying, yeah, there is something if you like craft beer, you should go there because it's kind of a connection for us, you know. They are on the other side of the planet, but in the meantime, we can share and celebrate in the same time. But that's great. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And I'm going to call uh, Bass back here. In uh, Antwerp, we have something like one, two, three, four. We have Beer Lovers Bar, Antwerp and Beer Tours, Special Belge Tap Room. Bar N. You have Café Pardaf, uh, Station 1280, Dr. Beer, Papa Jos. Brouwerij de Koning, de brewery, uh, Billy's Beer Cafetaria. De Vloerenaap is not in, in Antwerp, I think. Oh, okay. And we have also Paters Uh It's, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. And what can you tell us, for example, about some of these bars? It's a mix of craft beer bars. We well know Billy's Beer Cafeteria and uh, Beer Lovers Bar. Uh, are two relatively new, they've been around for five, six years, yeah, uh, um, but they are really brought craft beer it's, to uh, Antwerp. Yeah, 
definitely. Also with the festival of uh, Billy's Beer Festival, yes, Billy's very Craft very Beer very Festival. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, they did nice things. And it's actually really also Station yeah. 1280 is, is also yes, very crafty. True. Dr. Beer is actually also yes, very... that's true. Yes. They're, they're the craft scene actually of, of Belgium, uh, of, of Antwerp. And uh, well, you can always go there. It's it's nice bars actually. They yeah. all have their their unique identity actually. Uh, yeah, so Stefan has really made Billy's Beer Cafeteria. It's built around his uh, uh, you know his dog Billy's, who unfortunately sadly died, died uh, early this year. This but he year. really cared yeah. cared for it. Uh, we actually have a video on uh, Beer Idiots about the dog and about Stefan and about uh, his running of Billy's Beer Festival. Um, we also uh, really love Ben Floron from uh, Beer Lovers Bar. For example, they do a very nice event. Uh, they have a tap takeover also with a Mederi and I don't remember the other one. And of course, uh, Deconic is well known for what in Antwerp? Sorry? Decon the brewer. The Koning. The Koning, sorry. For the Bollocus. And what is a Bollocus? A Bollocus is a, is a, yeah, it's actually a beer you make in two times. So it's, it's from the draft. And uh, first you make the bottom. And after that, you, do, you pour it again, actually. And it makes a nice bubble of foam, actually, on your beer. It's, yeah, it's typical. And typical so Antwerp. And when you go to Antwerp in a bar, that's what you call it. You don't ask for... Uh, you ask a bollocke. A bollocke. And a bollocke. what does that word mean? Do you know? It's, it's, it's because of the bubble. Uh -huh. The foam, it makes a bubble on the glass. Yeah. And that's why it's called a bollocke. Oh, okay. That's, that's the easy thing. And so what do we have uh, starting on Monday? Let's look. Yes. Let's take a look. Right. So... On Monday, 22nd, tomorrow, in Antwerp. We first have the Papa Jos. Uh, they do a tasting uh, with a lot of different beers. It's actually a very nice bar. It's an alternative bar. Uh, alternative bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm still learning English as well, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole As you can see, my pronunciations of these things. Uh, and they have, yeah, you can go there and you have uh, a tasting of four different beers and you can, yeah, it's, it's a really nice ensemble. And on Tuesday we have quite a few things. Ooh. Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, all mixed up now. it's all mixed up now. So on our site, you can actually go onto our calendar. You can pick uh, what's on in each city, which is really, really interesting because... Uh, and then uh, there's, Tuesday, a there's a lot. That's that's a thing. It's it's also important. It's a nice filter on the website. Yeah. Uh, on the website itself, it's it's very clear. On the phone, it's like a hidden little icon you have to push. Uh, but also you can find it, and then you can filter everything. Like if you're if you're in Antwerp, you can only find the events in Antwerp because if you see the whole list, it's it's too much. Overwhelming. Yeah. But yeah, and then and then it's difficult to find your next sweet spot. That's so a little the problem. The power of the wood. The power of wood is in wood. Café Pardaf. Uh -huh. That's actually uh, at the at the Schelde. Uh, it's at the, really in the city center. Uh -huh. uh, and. Yeah, they have a nice selection of, of, of really a lot of beers. They especially the sour ones they are very good in, but of course you can go uh, you can go and have a nice taste anyway. Yeah, uh, all these bars we should say are whether it's Belgian Beer Week or not, they are really cool places to yeah. visit. Anyway. And also a, a big thing to understand is actually that uh, everyone thinks. We th we're doing the Belgium Beer Week. It's to celebrate the beer culture in general. And it's not only like, oh, everyone wants to do the Belgian things. No, 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 we want to celebrate the culture. It's really important because a lot of people are like, uh, yeah, maybe, but I don't find any Belgian beers. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Just yeah. do something nice with, with, with Belgium, yeah. uh, with, the, with the beer culture. Yeah, and uh, remember, it might not be just about Belgian beers because many 
many brewers around the world try to do uh, styles in the flavor of Belgian, and they call it a Belgian style, or trying to get close to the Belgian style, the triples, or even the wild fermented beers. But that's also, yeah. Fermented. And that's great, mm -hmm. because that's how culture spread. I mean, Belgium has also taken on IPAs. A lot of the craft brewers are brewing styles from other places. Uh, experiment, and that's the whole power of experimentation. That's the whole power. Yeah, yeah true. Uh, we also have the, because the power of wood is actually also an ongoing right. event, so it's not necessarily to go there Tuesday, you can, yeah. you can go there the rest of the week as well. And then of course we have at uh, the Beer Lovers Bar yes. with Ben. Yeah. Uh, they do the Belgian, so that's the Top takeover from the Ranke and the Mederi, so th you can also go there for a nice mead or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Ranke make is well known uh, for making amazing uh, beers, sour beers, regular beers, uh, Flemish red ales. I think yes. Yeah, yeah. So what else uh, do we have? Uh, we have a blind flight at Doctor's Beer, Doctor Beers. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Beer. Uh, I think it. I think it's a little the same event he did a few years ago. It's, yeah. it's like you get four black glasses, and then you can't even see the, the color. You can't you can't see anything, and it's then you get a, a little prescription note because it's a doctor, and you have to guess the what what the style is. What the f you have to guess the flavor, and eventually you have to guess the beer. And I believe if you if you do a good job. You can, you can, you you might get a surprise at the end. I uh, completely got that wrong last last time. I think I got zero right. Did you? Were you successful? I had some. Yeah. Oh, yeah. lucky you. Yeah, I had some, and yeah, then because when you can't see the color it's of the beer, strange. Yeah. yeah, it's completely strange because it, you can you can taste like it's it's. Something else. It can taste black even, and 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 it's it's it's, it's a, a blonde. yeah, it's a blonde. <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, that double tap takeover and meet the brewer. Uh, that's I guess that's the guys from uh, Special Belch. Well, let's I'm not sure. Out. Yeah, let's find out. Hold on because a second actually here. you just go through the website and you can find everything right yeah, that's what we're trying to do right now <laughs> there's there's a tab opened <laughs> yeah the tab's opening there we go the double tap takeover all right billy's billy's and the two brewers he's featuring at billy's on the 25th of august is full circle from the uk and oh. lobbyk from uh slovenia is it Lubbock? SL? Oh, we should have uh, put in what exactly SL is. I should know what that is. It's uh, Lubbock Brewery in... We don't know. Oh, Slovenia. I got yeah, it right. Yeah, Slovenia. yeah, Slovenia. See, I can remember. Never heard of them, actually. No, no, no. I haven't heard of either one of those. Then we're going there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, should go there, definitely. And uh, what else do we have? It's it's crazy, you have so many activities, you don't even know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. We activities. had so many come on uh, from before. Uh, we have a lot of people joining. And by the way, I should uh, mention to you, oh, we have two spellings of Antwerp, so there's other things that... Uh, we should mention that if you are uh, around here near the Barbateur and you're participating, or if you're just a fan of Belgian Beer Week, just come by pop by, and we should rem remind uh, people who are participating who have not yet submitted their events. There's a few of you who are a bit tardy, but that's okay. Please submit them, go to the site, and uh, you will see a place where you can add your events. Uh, because uh, now's the time to add it. We're doing a lot of promotion on social media, paid promotion, and uh, if People come on and they click on your uh, your uh, thing. And here's Special Belge. They're featuring... Uh, Malkroy step takeover. Uh, and actually, because Special Belge, it's it's a really nice bar. They yeah. have the... It's in the Trun Quartier, they call it. It's a former uh, military hospital, I think. And they... Yeah, did 
quite some renovations and they have a very nice place there. And I think starting from last year, they started brewing as well because oh, it's also they're also brewmasters. I think you can you can do the the course, and uh, well they do a tap takeover and I th I believe because they also already started actually they cheated a little bit, they started this Saturday they uh, did the tap takeover from Poala. Okay. We visited Poala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, and you got uh, a lot of very amazing stout. Yeah, 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 that was Puhaste. Oh, that was Puhaste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Puhala was was a little. Uh, they're they're. They're a little bigger and they're a little more, yeah, well, yeah, you, so they got a batch and uh, actually also very nice beers, very nice. It's from, uh, uh, what's the city again? Uh, Estland, Estonia. Estonia. Estonia, yeah. Okay, so that's Antwerp. I think we've gone through some of, most of the bars. Uh, I'll go back to the city. Antwerp. Oh. Let's turn to the top. Yes. Because you cannot hear because I will hear that this is you, so... Try to get who in? Paul. Oh, Paul. Okay, he's on there. But we, we need to hear him, of we, course. No, uh, you, you hear him, but give it to me and I will talk to you. Okay. Hear me. Now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, yes, we're having a call in from one of the participants or uh, one of our ambassadors in Poland. Uh, we'll get to him live in a second. Um, and here, something else that's on Friday the 26th. Uh, this is uh, the Antwerp Beer Tours. He's based in Antwerp, uh, of course. We also have guides. Guides, True. and we're going to be interviewing a couple of them here later today. And what's he doing? On, uh, and his thing will be on the 26th. They're doing a Japanese Antwerp North Brewery meets Italian pizza. So I think you can have nice pizzas with a nice beer, accompanied with a nice beer. Uh, and there... There's beers based on Japanese ingredients, sakura, sake, koji, rice. Yeah, 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 that should be weird, yeah. pizzeria. We have some really innovative events this year because we always really, we encourage very innovative events. Uh, uh, we even we even at last year we even at the Safe Brewery, the Antwerp Brew Company, they did a pizza with beer in the dough in oh. the in the dough. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the dough. Yeah, and stuff like that. It's also yeah, they're they're yeah, that's how it works. We had beer canning from La Source last year, right in the middle of their bar, mm -hmm. and then you could just pick up a beer. Which and was kind of funny because they also have tanks where you can just you can just the pour tanks. it out. <laughs> but it was nice. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> you just you just got a can. <laughs> yeah, you got a can, with their beautiful, yeah. of course, designs. Um, and also the the glass blowing. Yeah, very very. Yeah, from Gant. Too bad they're they're on a holiday now. We're getting Kevin. Hi guys. Desmond. Hello. Welcome to our chaotic live session as usual. <laughs> Right. At the Thanks barber, for <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. And what can you tell us? This was an amazing partnership. Kevin came to, to us to ask if we could uh, team up and partner somehow, exactly. and it's worked really, really well. There's been so much cross-fertilization. Mm -hmm. As we know, I think the press is really yeah, they caught up on it, them. and they can see the vision we both have together. Mm -hmm. Uh, we met you, I think, in 2019 when we interviewed you. The third edition of the Brussels Beef Fest, yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll put that video on later on, uh, yeah. just to give people a flavor of where it was at. But yeah. uh, Brussels Beer Week, uh, sorry, Brussels Beer Fest <laughs> is going to be 27-28, uh, kind exactly. of the round finale. And the cross-fertilization yeah. happens because a lot of the brewers, I guess, are inspired to come a bit earlier and participate in some tap takers in the week before. We so have different that's been events really lined up in Brussels uh, just before the, 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 the big finale, as we say, uh, before the, the Brussels Beer Fest, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us a bit about Brussels Beer Festival this year, the number of brewers and uh, the kind of your philosophy behind it and why you started it? So uh, this year is gonna be um, the fourth edition finally after two uh, postponed editions due to the corona uh, pandemic. 
Uh, so we're going to have two days, uh, Saturday and Sunday, 27th and 28th of August in uh, Tour and Taxi. Shed 1, we moved a bit. Uh, we were in Shed 3 before, we're in Shed 1 now. And we invited uh, 60 breweries that we selected ourselves to come over to the festival to uh, serve their uh, unique beers to our, uh, to our audience. So 60 brewers that we uh, selected uh, first from Brussels, as always, then Belgium, Europe and uh, worldwide. We have breweries coming from uh, Canada, from uh, United States and all. So it's a very, uh, it's a unique uh, selection that we made for our uh, audience. And uh, how, what, is it being growing, the number of people who've come? How many people attend over the two days normally? I know um, it's been a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a break. Well, like I said, it's been a, a difficult uh, past two years, but uh, we had growing numbers since the first edition that we organized in 2017. Uh, where we had around 3,000 people over the whole weekend and the climax until now was in 2019 where we had uh, 6,500 people during two days, over two days. So we hope to get at least that number, we hope to get a little bit more over the weekend, but uh, if we get 6,000, 6,500 we'll be already happy. What other events uh, during uh, you know the festival? You have some food tastings, exactly. some food pairings. Yeah. Can you give us a flavor well, of what's happening there? The thing is, um, we try to be a bit more than just a normal beer festival. We try to um, and give some enthusiasm from us to our audience and we organize private tastings where we invite the breweries to get close to the public in a limited seating, a close audience, where they can present their brewery, present their beers and all. We have a, a top selection of food trucks in an outdoor summer terrace. We have a conference, uh, which is very important this year with the Pink Boot Society. Uh, we try to get some social, cultural um, uh, baggage in, into the festival. We have uh, a culinary session on Sunday where we invite uh, Michel Bourri from uh, a very good restaurant in Hall Les Eleveurs. And we have our big uh, festival beer shop where uh, almost every brewery has some beers that people can buy and take home. And I know you have a special uh, package. Is that sold out or is it still No, available? it's still available. So each year we select six breweries that we ask to make a beer for us. So it's exclusively brewed or blended for the festival and we sell it to the audience. Uh, this year we have a pack with six uh, 75 centiliter bottles uh, with beers from uh, Cantillon, uh, Brussels Beer Project, The Ranke, Atrium, uh, also from Belgium, Marchand Famen, and then two foreign breweries. Uh, Orca Bra from Germany and Butcher Steers from uh, Holland, uh, Amsterdam. So six unique beers, only brewed for us, and they're available. They can be bought uh, via our ticketing service on our website. And of course, the price uh, to get into the Brussels Beer Fest is very democratic. Uh, we try to keep it as low as possible, exactly like you say, to have a democratic festival, because we want to have a crowd that's not only... We, the beer geeks are of course welcome, we need them, but we want to have a more wider audience of people coming to discover what is beer, what is artisan beer, what is an, uh, a craft brewery in Belgium and uh, outside of Belgium. That's why we decided to keep the entrance price as low as possible, 5 euro, uh, in pre-sale. Uh, at the entrance, the day itself, it's uh, 10 euros for a ticket. And then you have to buy tokens, of course, to uh, order your beers at the, at the breweries. Uh, what are some of the highlights? Uh, I know it doesn't, you don't want to pick out any particular brewery, but... When, uh, you, when you invite 60 breweries, it's always <laughs> difficult to uh, make a selection. But it's because I'm a big uh, Lambic fan and fan of spontaneously uh, fermented beers. I'm always quite proud to have uh, some Lambic blenders and breweries on our festival. So we have Cantillon, De Cam, uh, Lambic Fabrique, uh, Drie Fontaine, uh, the... Uh, Tilkan is, Tilkan is there, then Herberg is there, and we even have uh, quite the recent one, Burenerf Elenbos, with oh. Senna Elenbos, who is coming to present these beers. Yes. I'm always very proud, because it's really a tradition of Belgium from Brussels, and I'm always very proud to have them at our festival. Yeah. But we have plenty of, uh, we have uh, so many brewers that uh, present so many uh, different styles. Uh, it's really a weekend to discover uh, craft beer. Can you name some of the countries, for example? Yeah, sure. Uh, we have um, Hungary, we have uh, Poland, uh, Germany, France. We have Canada, United States, uh, the Czech Republic, um, Holland, um, Norway, Norway, sorry, uh, Sweden, uh, United Kingdom, Ireland. Uh, yeah, that's, wow. uh, yeah, that's, that's a, a very nice selection. Yeah, it's a wide selection. Yeah. 
what are some of the events some of the brewers are participating in uh, during the week uh, prior? You know, um, there are several events. I know um, the Polish uh, brewery uh, Bro Browar to Mosto is uh, coming here to Le Barbateur to do a tap takeover. We have um, the UK-based um, brewery Little Earths, who is going to a Brussels Beer Project to do a Meet the Brewer event. We have uh, one we are particularly proud of is uh, Gravity Brewing from Budapest, who is doing a, a beer and food pairing at our uh, our favorite Italian restaurant in Brussels, Latana. Latana That's yes. going to be a very interesting thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and. Uh, Great, and there's an after party. Ah, uh, yeah, the after party. I was almost forgetting <laughs> the after party. So the thing is, we close, we open the festival at noon, at 12, and we close each day uh, at 8 in the evening, a bit earlier to give uh, the people the chance to go to the center of Brussels and to have something to eat in our uh, very good restaurants in the city center and our bars. But on Saturday, after the festival closes, we move to uh, Brasil La Source. Right. which is uh, walking distance uh, of the festival. And there we do a big after party with our Ghent, uh, friends from Ghent, uh, dog brewing. They're bringing their barbecue restaurant, Ruk, and they do a collab with fermenting. So it's going to be a, a great after party. Yeah, so that's gonna be a Sunday great is going to be a bit more difficult for some of us, but uh, yeah, yes. we'll manage. <laughs> No, and Los Source is one of the amazing craft brewers yeah, in absolutely, uh, Brussels. Absolutely, yeah. uh, there's so many now. Well, we're... we're we're in heaven, basically, in Brussels. That's true. So yep. For the number of startups. We're brewers, spoiled. <laughs> we're spoiled. Okay, thanks a lot, Kevin. And Thank you. Uh, Thank thanks you very for much. stopping by and uh, sharing. Uh, uh, it's my Brussels. pleasure. Great. Okay, Thank see you. you soon. See you soon. All right, we continue, and hopefully, we get uh, the rest of my colleagues back since they've disappeared for beers. Uh, let's go through some of the uh, Brussels brewers. Uh, I knew this would happen once they started drinking. Let's go, guys. We're waiting for... Uh, we yeah. got Bass back. I got news, even. We have uh, exciting things going on. Uh, there's something from Yeast, the bar here. Oh, good, good. He's going to be interviewed. Uh, but before, we're going to have uh, an interview with Paul, our ambassador from Poland. Okay. And I suggest we first do another city. Okay. And then we can take okay. Paul with him. All right. So, let's find out another city. Shall we go to, say, London or shall we go international? Uh, the UK was very yeah, yeah. enthusiastic. And that's uh, due to one of our ambassador, Paul Davies. Yeah. He also writes for uh, Beer Idiots. Mm -hmm. uh, and he really, really helped us. He emailed all the lovely craft bars who, and bars that celebrate Belgian beer. Um, and uh, you know, Let's look they him up. signed up. Uh, well, we're gonna, he's on holiday right now, so he couldn't uh, uh, participate. But let's see, we have starting on Monday, we have uh, if you buy, we have the Westmalen cheese. Yeah, it's yeah. like if you have, if you buy two Westmals, it's a really famous trappist from Belgium, uh, in, in Westmal. And uh, if you order two, you get uh, a portion of cheese uh, from Westmal because they also make cheese. Yes. You, you get a portion of it. It's, uh, and then we have in Chester, believe it or not. It's okay, so in South Sea, uh, UK, it's a free portion of Westmal cheese when you order two Westmal double. And what's your, remember there's a, is it them that do you have the, uh, no, that's the West Mile where you do the beer mixing. Uh, you have a trip trap. Trip trap. And trip what trap. is a trip trap? It's a very thing that it's really knocked my head off. Well, yeah, Bass but it, it, it knocks you out like <laughs> eventually. And uh, what is a trip trap? You just blend the double, which is the West trappist, Mile actually the really trappist. Yeah. And then you have a triple, it's the blonde. Right. And you mix it together. And half it, and half, right? Yeah, and because you always... You always order it with two because you have two beers, <laughs> and then. Uh, but really, actually, the taste is 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 it's quite incredible. Yeah, it's I was quite yeah. surprised. Yeah. I was going, why do you want to ruin so two good beers? To whoever's watching and they're going there, I suggest you ask <laughs> a trip for a trip trap, trap. <laughs> and have some cheese with it. It really is amazing. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, let's see what else is there because we have, I think, uh, eight places participating. So that's the uh, trip trap. Well, you yeah, can order a trip cheese. trap. Yeah, you, you, you can order two West Malls. And <laughs> you, can also, also <laughs> you can also drink it separate. It's yes, the, yes, uh, yes. You still get the cheese, but I I'm think. I'm really <laughs> caught on to this idea of trip trap. And we also thought maybe there's other Trappist beers that we could try. Uh, and we make. experimented. A bit. Uh, with the Trappists. Yeah. And they not all go very well. No. Because you have Chip Chap. Yeah. It's Chime. Chime. Uh, you have the Trip Trap, of course. You have... Uh, what? Yeah, you, you got a bunch. You got yeah, a yeah. bunch. Okay, so here we go in uh, the Beer Hus. Beer House. Beer House. Beer, oh, you say Beer, beer House. house. Right? Yeah. It's the, the Beer House yeah. in uh, Towngate, Osset, England. They are also celebrating Trappist beers. They have a, they're going to have a Trappist day, the 22nd of August, and I think throughout Belgian Beer Week. In Osset. In Osset. Where is that? Well, it's Towngate, Osset, England. It's uh, near Wakefield. Near Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> That's but because of our <laughs> handy map. <laughs> <laughs> a very handy map, so you can figure out. And in Chester, believe it or not, where I used to live, oh, they're really? celebrating a shoof, a shoof party. Well, I didn't live in Chester, but I've been through Chester. Uh, the Cavern of the Curious Gnome. It's a lovely name for a pub. And they're having a shoof party on August 23rd. And can you tell me a bit about shoof? That's also a real Belgian tradition. And when I first came to Belgium 12 years ago, I just love the idea of these gnomes, and I started drinking the beer. The nice, the nice thing about Schuf is uh, actually it's it's in Schuf, yeah, uh, the the town. The, the town, and uh, well, actually it's all gnomes uh, on the logo, but actually if you drink too much Schuf, you should watch out for the gnome hitting you on the head. Yes, and it has hit me on the head before. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we just got news um, that poll is actually online. Okay, so we'll continue uh, with the UK We'll places. continue later and uh, I'll hand the, the mic to Dieter and then uh, he can talk with Paul a little bit. Hi guys, great to see you from this uh, a bit windy place uh, in Estonia. Uh, I'm just right now at the middle of the bog. Hope our connection will be will be okay. Yeah, can you can you hear me, Dieter? I cannot hear anyone by myself. Roger, Roger. So I'm really happy about the Bel Belgian Beer Week uh, because I was thinking about it a while, uh, while driving and, and, and walking around those beautiful uh, locations, that uh, Belgian beer uh, is an inspiration for uh, every beer scene actually there is in all the countries. And uh, yet it's still, uh, it is still inspiring many people in Poland and around. Uh, we've recently met uh, Dieter as well uh, while traveling to, to Brussels and uh, some smaller breweries and still we, we, we saw some fantastic places and uh, uh, some fantastic routes. And I will try to see what Dieter is writing to me right now. How is Belgian beer looked at in Poland? Dieter asks me, asks me because we seem to have a little bit technical problem. So using uh, using the, the the lamp behind me, or maybe from here, to distract you a little bit from what I am saying, <laughs> I uh, I can say uh, that uh, the Belgian beer uh, is considered boring by many of the uh, Polish people uh, because they don't know really uh, the Belgian beer. And uh, as Artur Napierkowski, my friend, put it in his um, uh, in one of his articles, uh, if you think that Belgium, uh, Belgium is boring, 
Belgian beer is boring. That means that you are boring. And I totally agree. Uh, because too often, like uh, we see in the Belgian beer, the, uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the beers you can buy in the supermarket, some of the Belgian triples, things like that, uh, Belgian blondes, those simple uh, everyday uh, drinking beers. And we, consider, we, we, we when we try them, we think that maybe this is something, this is something extraordinary uh, or something unique. Uh, but it's just a drinkable with beer. Uh, this, only this and, uh, uh, and, 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 and this uh, so so we don't see what's behind it but uh, we don't see the rich uh, belgian beer scene uh, that is uh, arose around the craft uh, beer uh, the wild beers fermented with different uh, types of uh, uh, yeast and ingredients uh, and uh, we lack uh, the uh, the chance to actually see uh, the, the uh, how how the Bill Belgian beer scene evolves and how it's uh, deeply connected with food, uh, how many Belgian dishes works really really fine uh, with uh, triple Belgian uh, blonde and others. Uh, and uh, at the uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to introduce a beer scene, a Belgian beer scene in Poland uh, by uh, inviting to Poland uh, many uh, nice Belgian breweries uh, showing off a totally different approach uh, to the beer. Uh, for example, uh, one year ago we had uh, a Cantillon, uh, which of course is uh, very well known from uh, their uh, wild fermented beers. Uh, we had De La Seine, which is like a uh, Brussels brewery, I must say. Uh, we had uh, also um, and Stommelings, uh, which is, uh, they are brewing traditional beers, uh, traditional beer style, but in their, their own way. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and uh, those totally different approaches uh, show the really big diversity uh, in the Pol in the Belgian beer, beer scene. And every every trip to Belgium is an inspiration for me uh, for main two reasons. Why one is that uh, there is a big big knowledge and experience among the people who, who try to brew uh, fantastic beer that is. Uh, the, the, and uh, you, you cannot you cannot find it anywhere else on earth, uh, like the super drinkable saisons uh, or, uh, um, or or fermented uh, wild fermented beers. Uh, but plus you have a lot of tradition uh, which we do not have unfortunately at all. Uh, so uh, I think this uh, this is an outgoing inspiration for the Polish breweries. Uh, and if it's not direct, so we uh, we brew a few Belgian styles uh, that doesn't mean that we are not um, inspired by the approach by, by, by the way uh, how drinkable the beer can be and I hope you will experience all of this don't forget to eat uh, good food while drinking fantastic uh, Belgian beers uh, and uh, have a lot of fun uh, searching for this inspiration because for me it's it's absolutely unique all the time and thanks, Dieter. And sorry <laughs> if I, that I couldn't hear. So all best, guys. Have fun this week. Here we are back again. Thank you so much for that roundup of what's happening in Poland. We will, of course, be featuring uh, the participants from Poland later on. But right now, we're really pleased to have Rafael from East, uh, a lovely bar, craft bar here in Brussels. And can you tell us about, a bit about Yeast? They, he's one of the co-owners and they recently took over Yeast, uh, who's well known to our heart uh, because we used to visit there quite a bit when Jenlin was uh, running it. Uh, and of course circumstances dictated and you guys came and uh, kept Yeast alive. And what was your reason, what's your backgrounds and why did, did Yeast interest you and in the whole craft scene? I know you're distributors, I think. Yes, yes. So. Actually, we, we came we, we came along this project with a with a bunch of friends, right? Uh, we don't have any background in uh, in beer or whatsoever, but we do have a background in, in drinking beer. Uh, we are all uh, students of uh, the UOB. We 
we really like beer. And um, I think we're part of this uh, generation of students that, all, that are looking for something else, something more than, uh, than, uh, than pills, and that actually did that step of really looking up, being interested in craft beer. Um, and so we came across this opportunity to, uh, to take a uh, hist. It was a bar that we actually went uh, quite a few times together to. So uh, we decided to, uh, to take over it, uh, keep it alive, because uh, we really liked the project. Uh, we really liked the uh, philosophy behind it. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's also a way to uh, kind of uh, uh, bring a bit of, uh, of, of youth and a bit of a, a visibility of, of this uh, um, kind of this area that, that is not very known or that is a bit niche. So uh, this is kind of uh, uh, how it came together. Do you still play music and records and uh, have you changed it a bit or what's the, the we have list? we have we have we are keeping it as uh, intact as possible uh, <laughs> the records are not that are not there uh, anymore unfortunately but uh, we are trying to keep the same vibe as it used to be because we do realize that we inherited of a very uh, a very special and a very unique establishment uh, so uh, we, we try to really keep the identity of Hist uh, as, uh, as intact as possible. And it's in a wonderful location, very cultural. Uh, what's the musician that everybody sits and wraps their arms around? I, I love sitting outside, outside the bar on the terrace and watching tourists come by. Can you tell us a bit about the area? Yes, yes. So uh, this, it's, it's uh, Place de la Vieille à Loublé, and we, you have the uh, statue of uh, Jacques Brel. And as you said, people love to, uh, to come over and, uh, and hug him. Uh, but as a matter of fact, uh, uh, one of these people was, uh, was Mick Jagger uh, a few, a few yeah, weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, were, we were actually there. Uh, we were uh, discussing uh, with the team inside. We didn't, we didn't even realize that uh, Mick Jagger was right outside the hist. But uh, it's, uh, apparently it's the place to be and uh, Mick Jagger knows about it. And what are you doing uh, for uh, Belgian Beer Week? For Belgian Beer Week, we're organizing um, three events. So, um, uh, the, I believe it's the 25th, uh, we're having a tap takeover with uh, Dansart. So, the, the Dansart team is going to come over uh, and they're going to spend the Belgian whole day. Belgian Beer Project? Yes, exactly. Uh, they're going to spend the whole day with us and, uh, and, uh, and, and share beer and discuss with the customers and just have a good time. So it's like a bar takeover? Exactly, like that. exactly, yeah, yeah. yes. Very nice. So uh, we're hosting them uh, during a whole day. Um, the next day we're having a uh, Drogenbos over. Nice. So uh, we're releasing their uh, bitter uh, in cask. So that's going to be something as well. Uh, and, and that's what's special about uh, you also have a cask uh, pump. E exactly, exactly. And this is also something that is uh, w one of the projects that we, that we want is we want to have this mix of uh, of uh, old uh, old uh, know-how and uh, and youth because uh, we think that uh, uh, it's important to really preserve uh, uh, the old know-how of beer etc and not lose it so this is also something we try to promote so the third event sorry the third event it's going to be well it's going to be a happy hour we uh, weekend so the whole weekend is going to be happy hour it's as simple as that very good. So c congratulations and thank you so much for participating in Belgium Beer Week and putting on some really interesting and innovative events and look forward to seeing you at some of these events. Thank you for coming. having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rafa. All right. We're okay. We're good? Yes, we're good. Okay. Thank you. Unless you have other things you want to tell us about, well. about Belgian beer culture. What, what interests you about Belgian beer culture? You mentioned... And the youth are, are youth really catching on to the the fact that you know it's not just about pills. I mean, you, you have a regular clientele at East, uh, but uh, you know what kind of you well, talk about youth. What, what's the feeling? Well, you see, I, we feel like people often have this uh, this image of uh, of craft beer of, uh, as being something that is very uh, very opaque. Uh, not very accessible uh, and kind of complicated, uh, and it 
it might seem so in the in the very beginning, right? Because uh, you have to get a bit educated on it uh, at first. But uh, but we, we we do know we do have a lot of friends, and we do know a lot of very young people who who actually want to know and want to understand and want to taste because there's so much to taste, right? Um, and it's it would be it would be a pity not to taste everything Belgium has to offer. Uh, as we are sitting here in the capital of, uh, of Belgium, right? And so, uh, so this is kind of the embodiment of, uh, of HIST right now. It's, uh, it's uh, making uh, craft beer accessible to all and kind of demystify it, if that makes sense. No, 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 that absolutely makes sense. And that's what we encounter uh, going around as beer idiots and covering, and uh, it's what we encounter as Belgium Beer Week. Uh, you know, we've gone to... You know, it's really surprising some of the uh, places in the smaller villages that are holding events, and we're for us it's a discovery as well, and that's why we started Belgium Beer Week uh, three years ago. You know, it was uh, it was first to we saw during COVID there was a little window of opening up, and Dieter said, "Hey, let's try and help the bars and the brewers a bit. There's no such thing as a Belgium Beer Week uh, doing culture." And let's see if we can get them together and maybe draw people to discover some of these places. Some are well known within the craft world or within the traditional world, but there's so many family brewers and exactly. that have been going on. It's a voyage of discovery every year for exactly, us. Exactly, exactly. And it's good that we have this uh, this beer week because, for example, I mean, you only have so many bars that have so many pumps, uh, and you can only discover so many beers. Uh, when you uh, when you visit a single bar or a single city, so I think this is a very great way to uh, to promote uh, uh, craft beer, and we're really uh, really happy to participate in it. And we love it that you're participating. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Take care, Raphael. Thanks. I'm going to call my uh, partner in crime back, Bess. Hello. <laughs> And then, if you could come on next, uh, maybe you can go we through. Can, we can go through the UK and Brussels. Yes, yes. And then we let's can finish call off. In. Yeah, let's yeah. finish off yeah. uh, the UK. Let's do that. Here, if you can hold that, I'll go through some of the uh, the things. So we mentioned the Traffords Day in uh, Osset. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, from Beer House. Old Trappists. Old Trappers, Osset, England, and uh, the next one is an old fountain tap takeover. This is based in London. Belgian born, he calls himself. It's the Solvay Society. I definitely have to visit. It's a tap taker of an old fountain. Exciting. Uh, nine taps. Uh, old fountain, I guess it's called. And that's going on on the 24th of August. It's the old, it's the brewery, yeah, old fountain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Really should taste one. Uh, yes, right. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> and then in Twickenham, a showcase of Belgian beer delights. Nice. By, uh, and I like the way uh, this, uh, it's called a brewery market. It's, it's in Twickenham. Uh, and uh, that's quite close to Bradford, uh, where my dad went to uh, oh, university. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, so, I love their plug. Can you read it a bit? Uh, can't get to Belgium this year? Can't get to Belgium this year. <laughs> Too bad. We're bringing the Belgian beer experience to the UK. We've imported some... Ac some Really rare. Oh yeah, really rare. And exclusive Belgian beers to enjoy right here in Twickenham. I'm excited what they, what they yeah, bring yeah, actually. I, actually, I would love to if they named it. Uh, yeah. Some rare beers. We'll, we'll see. We'll... Uh, we look up the menu. Yes, and if anybody uh, participating out there in London wants to call in, just uh, give us an email at uh, Dieter at idiots.beer, <laughs> and he will hook you up. All right, what's next in London? Or so, Yes, here we go. Yeah, what's next in London? <laughs> go ahead. We have the modern wheat beer versus classic wheat beer tasting. So I what's a modern wheat beer and a classic wheat beer? <sighs> I have no idea actually. The you got the wheat beer from the it's it's really blanche. Yeah. And then you have the old style, which is, I, th 
my 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 favor is going out to the classic style. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what we're, we're interested in. Uh, so it's founder Roman as he takes you to through a journey of modern wit beer versus classic wit beer. It's a ticketed event, and we should note that there are no tickets as such to Belgian Beer Week. We're a non-profit. We uh, just really we're an umbrella organization that gets people together, gets the bars and brewers together, and then we leave it to them to put on the events. Some charge, some don't. It depends. Uh, of course, you have to buy your beers. Uh, some may give you a little thing. Some may have quizzes, uh, tastings, and some you have to book. But of course, because there's limited. Yeah, limited. But of course. If you buy a beer, you buy a beer and you have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's there's no, no free, free beer. beer. <laughs> <laughs> we wish. <laughs> I think that was one of Bass's thing. What do we get out of Belgian yeah. Beer Week? Oh, well, occasional free beer for it's, us. It's always That's like that. <laughs> it's always like that. If you recognize us, please give us a beer. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, but what's uh, lovely for us is really meeting uh, bar owners, the brewers, many of them uh, we've never met before, some we've interviewed as the beer idiots. It's and a really interesting side. scene actually, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. We've definitely. learned so much yeah, doing this yeah, yeah. and we're still learning as you can see from some yeah. of our organization and uh, we've really had a lot of help from uh, Kevin who's uh, shown us a bit of how to do it and uh, We'll be better next year, we promise, every, and bigger. Uh, let's year. continue. Yes, every year we're getting bit bigger because, of course, we're all four working people. And here we have Belgian Beer Night in Daffen. And With a th nice picture of an Orval. Yeah, I love the Trappist. This is uh, the venue is called Beer Park Linelli. That's in the Daffin Trade Park in Daffin, somewhere in the UK. I guess it's, uh, I think it's in Scotland or near the lakes or something. Uh, he's going to have seven great Belgian beers. He'll chat about the styles, the breweries, and find a beer. It's hosted in their beautiful bottle shop and tasting room, only six minutes from the M4 J48. So, easy to get to. I don't know that road. It's a road <laughs> going somewhere. <laughs> Let's find out. You can click on our map and you find out where it is, but can't get it. Doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, sure. You just yeah, just click. go down here. Yeah. So, okay, I see it's in this. It's next to Wales. It's in Wales. It's in Wales. It's in Wales. Near Swansea. Hence the name. All right, and four. The Soul Bay Society is also holding a Rockford Village Tap Takeover as well on the 28th of August. And that's also uh, uh, another brewer. Uh, that's on Sunday the 28th. So they're going to close. It's four taps. Four taps. Of, uh, of this Rockford Village Brewer. Uh, so they close Belgian Beer Week in the UK. I really love the tap takeovers. Yeah. Like you can, you can taste the whole brewery at once and you get a really nice scent of, of how they, they yeah which beer they make and, and how it tastes and you also have the, 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 the flavors you can recognize from other beers but on the other hand really a different kind of beer Absolutely. I really love it to taste it yeah. and it's really nice when the brewer or brewers are there as well to give you a little chat you can talk to Always them nice. they tell you yeah. what they like and why they did something uh, and in case there's uh, many tap takeovers that are happening during Belgian Beer Week where the brewers will be there I'm not sure about this one but uh, there we go and uh, I think that's it for the roundup of the London brewers no. Then oh, sorry, the UK uh, brewers and the UK, the yeah? UK yeah, participants, yeah, yeah. and it's not just brewers. Uh, okay, and now we go to, I we guess... We can go to Brussels. We can go to Brussels. Yeah, Let's so. go to Brussels. Dieter made the sign, but I don't know if, if someone else called in. I don't think so, so uh, we can do Brussels. All right, so maybe you can talk a bit about the Brussels... Beer scene while I bring up some of the uh, participants? Uh, well, actually, it's uh, because I live in Antwerp. Yes. 
and uh, it's really exciting to see how much craft the, the craft scene actually really lives a lot in Brussels. Uh, the for example, there's a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, you can you 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 have the Belgian classics. It's yes. it's if you go to a, you have beer bars where they have more than two hundred Belgian beers, and it's all really classic and if you come to Brussels it's really nice to see a lot of beer bars that that actually really yeah do innovative stuff and 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 they try to make the craft live again and and that's sometimes what I miss in in, in Antwerp you have your regular choice but if you go to Brussels uh, yeah you you find a lot more like different tastes and, and small small brewers who sell their beers at the at the bar actually and that's something I miss actually sometimes in, in Antwerp uh, okay so let's go to see I just I just saw that uh, Dieter has another uh, visitor on Online? our website so, so uh, uh, we're gonna I think I'm gonna hand the mic back to Dieter and uh, we can have another chat exciting all right. Welcome, Doc. How are you doing? Hey, Dieter. I'm great. And you, my friend. <laughs> good, good, good. We got a kick of the Belgian Beer Week uh, yeah, within 22 hours. Uh, thanks a lot for being our ambassador in the Latin America zone. Um, tell me a bit, how in Latin America, how do people look towards Belgium, <laughs> Belgian beer and Belgium styles of beer? Um, you know, here in South America, I am from Brazil, but uh, here in South America, we have uh, we have a lot of fans, a, a lot of beer, uh, Belgian beer lovers, and of course, the Belgian beer styles um, make it by uh, Brazilian brewers. Here, uh, we are we have a lot of good samples of triples, doubles, saisons, and strong golden ales. So uh, the the persons here they uh, they search a lot of um belgian beers we have of course in Bel imported belgian beers here we have trappists here we have for example duho and uh Hoo garden of course bringing by Ambev. but um, yes here in south america belgian beers have great success okay and what uh styles of belgian beers inspires the brazilian beer scene the most right now the most right now is most about saisons, wheat beers, and some uh, wood aged and spontaneous uh, fermentation like lambics. Um, so uh, we have here in Brazil a lot of different woods, exotic woods, for example, from Amazonia mm -hmm. and something like that. And we have a lot of fruits, different fruits, different fruits from Europe, from Amazonic fruits, exotic fruits. So. In one one year or two years from now, the brewers here in Brazil they are work a lot with spontaneous fermentations, with this, of course, strange Amazonic fruits from Brazil, but of course, saisons, wheat beers, and then and triples, for example, uh, they are very very. Uh, um, produce they produce a lot here in brazil but now the train is spontaneous fermentation in different strange woods yeah you also organized the beer festival in your uh, in your hometown in bloomdow if i say it correctly um what are the influences that you notice there uh with belgium styles yes um i am the technical director for the brazilian national beer competition so this year uh, we had uh, we had more than 3,600 beers, only Brazilian craft beers, in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in our competition, and of course together with the competition we have the festival too, more than 100 beers, uh, sorry, more than 100 breweries in uh, our festival and with more than 1,200 beers to taste in four days festival. So it's very big and we, we can f you can find a lot of Belgian be a lot of Belgian beer styles uh, in this festival. Of course, 
did it by Brazilian brewers. And he, uh, here in Blumenau, for the next week, we have uh, one event of the Belgian Beer Week, uh, a beer pairing with Belgian beer styles with typical Brazilian food. So that will, uh, this will be great, uh, be a, a, a really nice event here in Blumenau. And we have another event in Rio de Janeiro, in Sao Paulo. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, and tell me, you also um, guide, of course, uh, people from Brazil, uh, I think every year or twice a year, towards uh, Belgian breweries. Sorry, Dieter, say again. You, you also guide uh, Brazilian people towards Belgian breweries in Belgium. Yes, yes. Um, I have a, I have a, a company that uh, we do, I do travel uh, around uh, tra trip beer trips around the world and uh, i already did that uh, from belgium several times i think five or six times to belgium one time to italy one another time to germany now um in october i will do a trip a beer trip to california so the united states and um uh, we are trying i try to show to the Brazilian brewer, brewer, brewers, Brazilian brewers, beer lovers, beer journalists, how is this Belgian beer scene in uh, in Belgium? So we visit, we uh, do. I do ten days of Brazilian beers, Belgian brewers visits. So we visit a lot of breweries in Valoni, a lot a lot of breweries in Flanders. We mm -hmm. visit uh, Trappists, Abbey beers. Uh, of course, one day only for Lambic beers. So it's very interesting because, uh, of course, the Belgian beer culture is very famous in the world, but a lot of Brazilian breweries, uh, Brazilian brewers, sorry, Brazilian brewers, uh, they never visit uh, Belgium. Um, so when I took them to, to Belgium, they they can see with their own eyes all the culture all the experience they can talk with the brewers for example when i visit cantillon jean van Roy comes with uh, comes to the group to talk about lambic when i visit uh, uh, another brewers uh, for example lambic fabric yopanils come to talk with us mm -hmm. with the brewers so they can talk about of course beer culture and beer tech brewing technicals you know that's important because um, the belgian brewers they are very knowing about culture of course but with technical too yeah and the consistency yeah. what are some of the key takeaways that uh, brewers from brazil learn from uh, belgian brewers yes yes um for example um Together with the, the competition and together with the festival, we have a congress, technical congress here. And we invite a lot of Belgian breweries from Belgium and um, to, to talk, to, to do some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, speaker, to, to be speaker here in our co technical congress. For example, next year, I'll, t I'll talk it this year to, with um, Ivan de Bats from Brasilia de la Seine. He have, he's very mm -hmm. famous. He, yeah. he have a lot of knowledge about ferment, fermentation and yeasts. So uh, I am talking with him to be here next year in Blumenau to be a speaker in our con technical congress. So oh. the Brazilian breweries they they have a lot they have a lot to know a, a lot to understand about the technicals and of course raw materials history and cultures and culture with with belgian brewers yeah all right uh doc we're gonna further kick off the the belgian beer week and see you very soon and next time in brussels buy a good belgian beer of course and a brazilian one yes of course, of course. all right thank, thank you so much Dieter. see you see you see soon you. my friend and now we're going to go back to Bastian. So, hi guys. Uh, we were talking about the events, the exciting events uh, happening in Brussels. Yes, Dieter as well. Yep. So we have a, a Senna beer tasting with ones in Brussels. Yeah. Once in Brussels, um, is somebody who does the uh, 
English, yes. Uh, who does the tastings, uh, Bed Lassen, and Lassen subscribed with a good amount of activities, with uh, also with chocolate and beer pairing, and also visits in French and I think in Dutch or English, I think English and French. Uh, visits that you can visit also uh, Brewery de la Seine, uh, very nice location uh, in the summer, uh, by tour and taxis, you can drink your beer there, it's you can sit nice there though. very relaxed. Yeah, um, uh, and also we have the Brassico, Biero Sandre. Oh. Yeah. That's from Brussels Beer Project, I assume. I don't know much about that one. Ah, yeah, that's from Agamalt. Yeah, of course, we will go in depth uh, in that one. That's uh, Cedric from Agamalt, who is sitting right there. Um, and we will go in detail over that event when he We're comes. We're going to uh, invite uh, him later. Eh? Yeah. yeah. The Oid Voltage uh, release party, tap takeover van Atelier. Um, at the tap room, um, and that's um, from uh, L'Hermitage, eh? who... Um, L'Hermitage? Yeah, Brasserie L'Hermitage in Brussels. What um, do they do? They brew um, well, very good beers, of course, and they do a tap takeover with also a barbecue. Uh, they have a bar in saint Gilles. Okay. And, they all, and the brewery is very close to Cantillon, so when you are going to visit Cantillon or L'Hermitage, they are literally 200 meters away from there. Uh, very cozy place also, um, and this one is in the tap room, eh? in the brewery. In the, in the brewery yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what can we expect from Lemitage? Lemitage, oh, very good IPAs, of course. Um, they have some some porter, some stouts, mainly their signatures. You always taste their their special Lemitage signature with their yeast. You can always taste and smell like, all right, this is one from Lemitage, and in a good way, like they. Uh, quite young brewers uh, came to Brussels, I think, oh, shoot me now, three, four years ago okay. or something. Um, and yeah, young guys, modern, good beers, good quality, consistent. Um, and like, yeah, they're fun to party with. Eh? With Beer Idiots, we, we saw them at uh, various events. I remember uh, Suske with his uh, moustache yeah. that I was when I was a young Beer Idiot. I wanted to interview him, but uh, he was like, no, no, I don't do interviews, uh, it's my first time. Then I pulled a joke on him, like say a number between one and five. Whatever number you say, you want an interview you with the beer, with the beer <laughs> idiots. And that's how we, uh, for the first time, interviewed <laughs> Le Mitage at the uh, SWAF Festival when it was in okay. the castle of, uh, of Molenbeek. Yeah. Eh? Yeah, uh, uh, fun guys, always rock and roll, um, definitely worth visiting. And I see in the small letters down in that event that there is also a barbecue. So I would love to uh, barbecue all day long. That's uh, exciting. With the guys from Le Mitage, that's really a party. I'm also excited about the beer and cider hybrid. Yeah, yeah, cider. Eh? I'm really, yeah, but I'm wondering what because it's beer, oh yeah, it's beer and cider, cider. not or, or it's a hybrid. hybrid. It can I'm, be a hybrid, eh? Can be I'm hybrid. excited uh, about that one, actually. Yeah. And then we have Latana. Latana, the food pairing event at Latana with Gravity Brewing. Uh, Latana, of course, if you want to eat uh, the real Italian food in Brussels and you want uh, good Italian craft beer that you cannot really find that easily in Belgium because he orders it himself and stuff like that. Very close to the central station uh, at Latana, so uh, always great, great food, uh, great Italian Italian beer style. And they have uh, Gravity Brewing coming over from Budapest. Gravity Brewing That's from something Budapest. We just visited actually. Yeah, we're actually <laughs> three days ago. We, uh, we three, there. four days ago, we were at uh, Budapest. It's a very nice people. Yeah, uh, the yeah. girl, the girl, really, yeah. And she said because they're also going to the Brussels Beer Fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Latana did something. That's our cooperation with the guys from uh, Brussels Beer Fest. Yeah. Uh, they also contacted an uh, Latana to do also a, yeah. a special thing there. And actually when we visit, I like, accidentally visit the brewery at our uh, promotion trip yeah. in uh, Czechia and Hungary. Uh, yeah, it's in a basement. Um, you can see the, the brewery yeah, installation. It's a, really it's a nice, nice, it's a cellar. It's a cellar, right? And also their, their stout was like quite, quite good. But that's also the nice part about our collab uh, yeah. with Brussels Beer Fest. 
because the guys from Brussels Beer Fest, they invite a lot, a lot of brewers. And uh, it, sh it, it would be, yeah, sad if they're just for one weekend in Belgium. Yeah. And it's also very nice. They can do events the whole, the whole week, actually with yeah. the participation of the of the Belgian Beer Week. I, I really love the idea and, and so the brewers yeah they don't need to come to Belgium just for one event. They can showcase the whole week. It's a, it's it's really nice about it. Uh, but for Latana it's really important to make reservations as well. Yeah, yeah of course it's not of course a, it's limited. It's, it's, not, a, yeah, very it's a very venue, small venue. So get your tickets is also organized by beer.be of course. Um, and then the next one, the, the blind tasting in Brussels, which is um, Lizelot from Beer Secrets working together with, um, let me check, with Hoppiness, I assume. Maybe scroll to the top. With, yeah, with Hoppiness, which is a new tasting room here in Brussels, which I didn't visit yet. Um, blind beer tasting, always interesting, eh? Like, you, it's yeah. You, you, it's like Doctor Beer. Yeah. And uh, you really you don't know what you get. You just have to, yeah, make your, your yeah. taste work. Uh, yeah, and you always think like, oh, yeah. this is a, a porter. This is a nail, whatever. And you. It's, it's also uh, very surprising what you yeah. what you taste when you don't see it. Yeah. Uh, true. That's that's interesting about it actually, uh, because, yeah then you really notice how much you taste with your eyes actually yeah the, the color gives you uh, yeah, a deal, like you say in dutch eh? like a horror deal. Yeah. it gives you a <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to uh visit again, Gide. yeah again agamalt eh? our uh, one of our favorite beer guides who is also here and later on he will uh, go into detail of this will, event yeah, he, he sure. guides again uh, into which brewery oh, is it it's in drunk. french that they uh, l'ermitage yeah. yeah so definitely worth also uh why don't we just call him yeah and then he can go over his events let's call cedric in we have one more brassico or that's, also, that's, that's also Cedric. That's yeah? also Cedric. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Cedric, we need you. We need you. Let's give a little shout out uh, yeah. After to encourage him. We're going to make place well, for um, Ahmed and uh, for Cedric yeah, to Cedric. let him tell about all the wonderful events he just, uh, we just reviewed. He submitted. Yeah. I'll make place for the guy. No, thank you. Yeah, 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 sure. Welcome, Cedric. Uh, yes, Dieter is crying for his Big beer. Booster. <laughs> <laughs> and Cedric has always been a wonderful supporter to us uh, of, of Beer Idiots and the Belgian Beer Week. Uh, he was also uh, very active during uh, COVID. No, absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. helping and advocating uh, with uh, all the beer uh, experts and bars and who were really hurt by COVID and uh, what was the outcome of that uh, you know th that advocacy um, let's say we definitely came to the conclusion that uh, most of the sector has been um, roughly said especially in Brussels uh, despised and uh, misconsidered uh, which is really sad because uh, it's a huge provider of uh, taxes, but also um, work, but also uh, culture exchanges and, and so on. Uh, but it also had uh, um, some beneficial effects. Uh, one being that uh, the whole um, uh, Horeca Federation has been completely uh, uh, um, uh, changed. And uh, by now, uh, at its head, we can find really motivated and completely independent people, which is uh, good for uh, the sector, yes. You are, uh, you know, you take people around, you introduce people for whether it's foreigners, uh, tourists or Belgians. How has that been going for you? Uh, has your business revived? I know you, in terms of tours and all that? 
Yeah, um, uh, I uh, came to um, uh, develop a little bit my activities uh, from uh, private events uh, at home to uh, tours, uh, tastings, but also uh, audits and uh, beer selections for bars, etc. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, I keep on having a small yet constant uh, growth. So it's yeah, it's promising. And you go under the, we didn't mention the, your business name, you go under the name of? Agamalt. Agamalt. And yeah. is there a meaning to that name? Uh, yeah, there, there is a meaning indeed. So uh, it's related to my second job uh, as a psychologist. Um, since I'm working, uh, roughly said, with uh, the concept of desire, uh, I can, we can talk of it uh, for hours, I believe, but that's not the point. Uh, thing is, uh, if you consider desire as something that drives everybody's uh, life, that works for both uh, uh, psychology uh, and also when uh, it doesn't work as good as it should, and also uh, in the beer world, we are drinking amazing stuff and this is absolutely not because we're thirsty. It's beyond it. And what drives us to drink amazing stuff um, is always to be uh, listened to, cared about. And so that's the meaning of agalma. Agalma, it's uh, ancient Greek, um, designing um, uh, the so-called precious stone that uh, a sculptor can find uh, in uh, the raw uh, stone before being uh, um, sculpted. Amazing. Uh, and that's the metaphor of the, the concept of perfect beer. It does not exist, yet you still, all of us are looking for it. And m maybe the best beer is the next one. And that's why you're driven uh, to taste, to understand, to study. Uh, uh, to be curious, to be interested, and so on. So that's the point. And malt, I have forgot it. Uh, I, I don't remember what malt means. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and uh, what kind of events are you holding this year for Belgian Beer Week? And as as uh, uh, always, so far, I'm, I'm having three events, um, two uh, uh, complete uh, tours of two different uh, zones in Brussels, um, and one which is completely, uh, yeah, uh, unique, uh, where I, I will explain that. Basically, uh, I'm giving a tour of uh, L'Hermitage, only this time it will be completely uh, uh, in the dark. So no light will be lit, but ours own. So that means that I invite my customers to come with their uh, torchlights and we'll tour the brewery uh, only with our direct lights, which is really uh, yeah, quite unique, I believe. Absolutely. And uh, so that's why I named it uh, uh, Visite de l'Hermitage à la Lanterne. So that's the, the mind game uh, with it. It's a play on the name of one of their favorite uh, one, one of their, their beers. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their uh, uh, flagships. Um, so that's one of the uh, activities I will be uh, um, uh, introducing. There is another one which is uh, we're touring uh, two breweries uh, at the center of Brussels, so namely the, the neighborhood Dansart. So we'll go to Brussels Beer Project Dansart, and after that we'll go to um, Surrealist. Um, and then we'll also have uh, another beer in another bar to talk of the basically uh, uh, today's uh, craft beer uh, in Brussels, uh, uh, the production, but also the actors, uh, the history, etc. So yeah, that's the... That has to be a, a quite interesting tour. And the second one uh, is happening in uh, the neighborhood uh, Touré Taxi, uh, where we'll be able to taste, of course, we'll, we'll tour a brewery, but also we'll taste several beers from other breweries, but not only beer, but also uh, distillates, but also wine. And uh, just to give um, an introduction, uh, a sample of uh, all the uh, know how the savoir faire of Brussels uh, in matter of not drinking in quantity but producing in quality. And for me, that's uh, one of the parts I cherish the most uh, in Brussels the fact that we can be very creative and very innovative but also very high quality uh, product wise. So that's, what, that's something I want to highlight uh, this, this year. Excellent. So yeah. those are your events? And Absolutely. And much thanks for that. And what's your. What's your take on Belgian beer culture uh, this year? Is it growing? Is it becoming 
more I know it's re renowned and whether it's uh, among beer geeks, but it's also really spreading. And in fact, Belgians themselves are coming to value it. As you mentioned, it took a while for the Horeca during your time to people to see the value, not just monetary wise, that's hard to recognize sometimes and to see that it's not only the big brewers, mm -hmm. uh, it's also the th hundreds of uh, small family brewers, the traditional brewers, the craft brewers, the micro brewers, whatever they call themselves, that, and the bars, of course, small to large, whether it's brown bars or, or uh, newer, more modern craft bars. Yes. It's an amazing scene that uh, people are coming to value more. We are uh, witnessing uh, a market that doesn't stop evolving, uh, moving, morphing, so changing of, uh, of shape. And because of it, its actors, uh, so both male and women, uh, but also uh, uh, regarding uh, the neighborhood where they would settle, um, the culture they want to, uh, uh, to uh, highlight, etc. Uh, that's an amazing scene to observe from my perspective, of course, and especially if you consider uh, a tea time, a, a, a particular time, but also uh, throughout the history. So uh, it, it started more or less 20, 25 years ago, uh, and uh, from them, from then, uh, how much it changed, how much, it, how much it evolved. It's uh, yeah, incredible to observe, and. Um, yeah, that's one of the, uh, uh, the subjects, the topics I'm studying uh, uh, from very deep, from uh, the inside of it, uh, because of course we had uh, um, beer initiatives that uh, started, but also some that uh, uh, stopped, that closed, and that's for mm, sometimes very interesting reasons. And so, yeah, yeah that's something that really drives me. Um, one of the, yeah, we mentioned earlier uh, the concept of desire, that's one of my desires, to, um, um, to tell that story, to understand what's going on uh, on that. And hopefully we are also observing um, the uh, spreading, the, the uh, uh, increasing um, uh, size of beer drinking population, but also uh, its diversity it's less and less uh, beer geeks that are uh, interested into that topic, but uh, uh, more and more people. Um, it is not difficult to find uh, people that are um, even loosely interested in, in the topic and that uh, have um, very unique, if not uh, at least very interesting uh, ways of um, relationship with, uh, with beer. Today, you can find uh, craft beer almost everywhere, almost. Um, and that's, yeah. That's promising for me. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for popping by, Cedric, and we hope you have a great Belgian Beer Week and that people come, to, you know, uh, flock to your events because uh, the tours are quite amazing and oh, yeah. I really love the innovation you've put into it. So thank you very much for participating this year and sharing your time with us. Cheers, guys. Book. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, Cedric. And we'll call Bass back. Uh, are we st have we finished uh, the Brussels uh, participants? Because we actually have the uh, Seth from Barbatur here who will call in uh, in a few seconds. But uh, uh, I think we were stranded at a lot of events that uh, Cedric that he covered. That Cedric Algamet, covered. Yeah. Uh, so also, I think this one, the Discover La Seine Brewery. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's still Cedric, is it? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. also Cedric. And, uh, okay. And we have, we have La Source, the, which was also mentioned uh, by Kevin. This is the uh, after party for Brussels uh, Beer Fest on the 27th. On the 27th, a happy hour all day. Uh, we have uh, Kemper and La Fruitière, which is an amazing. Well, Kemper is one of Dieter's uh, obsessions. Obsessions. And, uh, and he's you really also did a very nice video with it from uh, from Beer Idiots. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a good yeah. interview with him. He, uh, he went to visit the brewery. Yeah, yeah. It's it's three days. Yeah. And La Fruitière, which is of course a cheese. Uh, uh, 
restaurant, as you can call it, where you can go and sit and eat amazing cheeses. I've never been Beer, there. Beer, cider, and cheese. It's next to, uh, it's like to the Moder Lambic uh, Fontenay. Ah, okay. Right? And uh, there it's an, a unique opportunity to discover beers, ciders of Kempker paired with artisanal cheeses of La Fruitière. So he's got four beers, four cheeses, selected by Jan and Nicole from Kempker together with Leo Biggin from La Fruitière. Expect fire not to be it's, missed is what they're saying. And it's 30 euros per seat. And well worth it because uh, yeah. they served uh, the cheese uh, at the uh, press conference we had at Lemuel Brewery. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was just incredible. I mean, the press I, practically lunched on that. It's nice. I hope they, they really did a nice selection for the beers and the cheese you oh, can yeah. taste together. Because if you, if you taste a beer and afterwards you get the cheese and you taste the beer again, it can, it can make can a complete different sensation. Exactly. It's, it's, it's very nice. Yeah. You like your cheeses as well. I like my cheeses. <laughs> and we have uh, another event at La Seine, this time by Once in Brussels, who's another uh, beer guide, beer expert. And he's going, to, uh, uh, he's going to have an activity at La Seine, which is, of course, one of the famous craft and perhaps original craft brewers here after with Cantillon. Uh, they're going to do a tasting with specialist tasting there. Uh, again, uh, it's uh, available in English and in French, uh, and that's on the 23rd of August. So uh, yeah, check thought, that out. I thought there's a tour uh, first for the, for the Dutch version, and then an hour and a half later, I think it's the, it's the French tour or the English tour. And then, of course, we have an unusual event. It's being held in four different Brussels bars. And can you explain that uh, to me? Because you are one of the kicker fanatics. So I'm a kicker fanatic. Table. table uh, <laughs> but actually, this comes from uh, our own uh, Dieter. He has a soccer uh, table soccer club, and it's called Kick It. It's a very nice logo, by the way. It's Malika Piss hanging on a. On a, on a, what's it called? A bar, a, bar a kicker the, bar. Yeah. Uh, and they do a pup, pup crawl in uh, all of the actually favorite beer bars because, uh, yeah. So it's Le Petit Lion, the Dolmois, the Bar Zebra, and Rock Classic. Yeah. So it's all on the same day. You start. Uh, no, it's two different days. Oh, two it's, different it's Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Starting uh, Tuesday, it's starting at seven o'clock at Le Petit Lion. Yeah. And, and Wednesday, it's starting at at the Cafe Central, Bar Zebra, and then it's going to Bar Zebra and Rock Classic, Excellent. and it's actually all nice bars where you can drink your your and craft. And Peter, of course, yeah. will guide you through some of, of the beers course. too, because he he's well. I think he's got his name all over those. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, 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 definitely. And by the way, <laughs> here in Belgium, they call them kickers, uh, right? Is, is kikkere. 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 Yeah. Or tafel football, eh? table soccer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There we go, same thing. And going local, Tipsy Tri Brewery and Hoppiness. So that's, uh, that's going to be a fantastic local beer combo. Uh, an inclusive tour of Tipsy Tri, the hottest new Namur brewery and distillery in town. I haven't met them before, so it was really amazing that they joined in. Yeah. Then they take a short walk to Hoppiness Brussels Tasting Room, where they'll be hosted by a beer sommelier, Karen, and talk about some of the many Brussels breweries. There's too many to talk. Yeah, I mean, in the last many. two, three months, we had Mazette open uh, earlier this year, Surlist. Uh, and the price, two. yeah, it's a 30 euros per person. You book for two and pay only 55. So there's a little thing there. And that's going to be an amazing uh, event. We also have uh, here, well, we've talked about, well, we'll talk about that one later. We have yeast, of course, uh, yeast, uh, going wild with the Belgian Beer Project Tap Takeover, uh, which uh, we had. And then beer and chocolate. We always have to have a beer and chocolate. You could not have a Belgian Beer, beer Week without... <laughs> 
you know, it's either chocolate or uh, frit. And this one is going to be held at the Brasserie La Seine. They had a similar tasting, very successful last year. And they're redoing again. Julie has been really supportive. And of course, Ivan de Batz, very supportive of uh, the Beer Idiots and Belgian Beer Week. Uh, and that's on the 25th of August. And that's also, of course, a paying event. Uh, please contact them. I don't see how much it is here. Uh, but the uh, chocolate's going to be one, of, oh, the cost is 25 euros, but it's going to be one of my favorite chocolatiers, uh, Laurent Jabot, uh, one of the, and, and Frederick Bondel. So. And again, exciting, which tastes you can, which flavors you can, you can taste. It's, it's, yeah. So Definitely. it's either cheese, it's, it's chocolate. It's chocolate. Uh, somebody should do something beer and frites. Um, Dr. Beer was saying that he wanted to do a, a beer mindfuck. Too bad he didn't. Yeah. Well, because he actually said like, yeah, you can have a Cuberdon, you know, the Neusikus from, yeah. from Brussels. Yeah. And uh, stuff yeah, like no, that. No, so if you is a very special yeah, 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 yeah. and then again the the change of flavor you get in your beers, it's yeah. it's 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 <laughs> wild. It's yeah, wild. The yeah. is a very special taste. Uh, yeah, but it's not only that. But yeah, you but can gets you yeah, the idea again of Belgian the, yeah, yeah, yeah. things that are very particular to Belgium. True, that's the whole point. And here in uh, Brussels, <laughs> you can beer spa joined in you can have a bath and some hops <laughs> some hops and, and malts drink and as much yeah. beer from a tap as you want and uh dieter did you ever use my coupon that i gave you yes you did <laughs> three weeks ago and three how was ago. it can you Great. tell us can you tell us what it was about yeah it was uh, it was okay it was good it's really relaxing um a bit noisy in the spa itself, but yeah, you really notice that when you do it with, with the herbs and the hops and the, the yeast and everything, it really relaxes your skin a lot. And did you manage to drink out the taps because it was unlimited beer? No. <laughs> did, you, did you experience yourself as Mr. Hoppy? <laughs> <laughs> because Mr. Hoppy is our symbol. <laughs> Very good, and I'm really pleased that Good Beer Spa came on board. Yeah, really nice, really, really nice. nice. Yeah, it's also uh, the culture. And then, of course, uh, the bitter release, uh, which we talked about. It's uh, the Rogan Bos and East East. Uh, th they're releasing a new bitter there, so that's always exciting. And that will, of course, be on the 26th of August. Uh, we haven't mentioned uh, Le Barbateur, but uh, Perhaps That's you can, going uh, to, I'm going to call him. Yes, please, Seb. Uh, so, really exciting stuff going on in Brussels and across Belgium, of course. And he's outside, uh, sitting outside. Um, so we're going to call Seb in a minute at the Barbateur. Here we go. Seb, thank you so much for hosting this live session at the ba Le Barbateur. Cheers, always a pleasure to have you guys around. And tell us a bit about the Barbateur, how many taps, and then we'll talk about uh, your involvement in Belgian Beer Week and the Brussels Beer Festival. But yep, so uh, Barbateur is a beer shop slash bar. Um, only craft, obviously. We have more or less 350 to 400 uh, reference uh, to take away. Um, and then 20 beers on tap to drink in. We also have a big fridge with uh, some um, like um, rotating selection of cans and bottles to drink in as well. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Um, yeah, we opened so now seven, seven and a half years ago in Skarbik, uh, which uh, was a, a pretty um, non-existing um, neighborhood in terms of uh, nightlife uh, bars and, and and nice places to go out uh, and then i believe that we were yeah part of some of the first uh, first um, bars or restaurants to do something in the neighborhood and now it's uh it's uh, it has like dr dramatically changed and and for the for the good of the um, of the neighborhood so yeah uh, absolutely you have uh within uh, Scarbeck, where I happen to live as well. So you became one of my lovely neighborhood bars. 
We have meal brewing down the road. And of course, if you're on the other side, you can walk to Piton. Yep. Uh, and we think this is a really exciting up and coming area. Indeed. And how many taps do you have? So 20. 20 taps. Yeah. That's amazing. And what I really love about this place, and, and by the way, we have a real connection here because the beer idiots at one time, and we have a little plaque that we hope to put up here someday. Uh, the beer idiots. <laughs> <laughs> the beer idiots were here. And in this very room, we used to go live with our planning meetings when we first started up. It was yeah. really one of the most boring videos ever. <laughs> People would just watch ours as me and Dieter uh, tried to think up of how we make uh, work together and make uh, the beer idiots and what we were going to do and, and videos. So, you know, this place was one of the places that was open Sunday. We could come and you let us sit in this back room. And of course, what I really love is that you uh, serve from, you know, the usual sizes, but you also allow people for the same price without charging a premium. Maybe that's changed. Uh, mm -hmm. A little, tasters. you know, tasters. Yeah. And that was amazing. You could try all 20 taps, and we have tried, <laughs> <laughs> drinking a little. And that, that's what I mean. You made it really accessible to people who might not you know, might be curious about a beer, but they might not want a 25 or a 33. Yeah, that, that, that was really good innovation. That was really all the, um, all the thing about those tasters. That it was, um, yeah, to, to let people experience, because, um, I mean, seven years ago, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing like it is now. I mean, like, you, you probably have 60, maybe, yeah, 60%, let's say, of bars who have at least some craft on their menu. And it wasn't, it wasn't that uh, seven years ago. And so, yes, it was kind of a new thing. So bringing these tasters to kind of allow people who were maybe scared about, you know, like having full beers of uh, that style that they didn't know about, or that ABV that they were scared of, or that kind of mix of things in, 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 the, in the recipe of the beer. Um, so, yeah, that really kind of, um, yeah, uh, as you say, like made these beers accessible. And yeah, it was the thing that's still it was still working. Yeah. For me to drink five stouts in an evening. <laughs> <all> down, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm not sure that Dieter was, it was taking the, the tasters. He was taking <laughs> the full yeah, twenty five. <laughs> that's, that's why we work so good together. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I get that. <laughs> I get and, that now. Uh, what are you doing for Belgian Beer Week? And then we can talk about Brussels Beer Festival. So as, yeah. As part of um, so Belgian Beer Week, I'm hosting a tap takeover um, with um, Brouwer uh, Stu Mosto from um, uh, Poland. Um, it's been some time actually that I wanted to invite them, so it's a good thing that they're coming over for the the Brussels Beer Fest, and uh, yeah, so that makes just things easier because they. The brews are here anyways, the beers are coming, so um, yeah, it made it easy to, to, to choose and um, uh, host, uh, host that brew for, for an event at our place here. Yeah. How many uh, taps will you have with them? I think if everything goes well, we'll have, have 11 taps. Wow. Uh, and um, I think we're having two or three beers extra by the bottle um, from their, um, their barrel, barrel aging uh, project. Um, also spontaneous beers, uh, so yeah, um, a lot of things to taste I think on um, this uh, this coming Friday. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Seth. And uh, thank you guys. Have a great Belgian Beer Week, and I hope you get out to some of the other venues and see what's going on. It's going to be a busy uh, week, indeed. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Cool Thanks stuff. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Cheers. All right. Cheers. All right. Well, let's continue with some of the other places from. Uh, uh, Brussels that we haven't completely finished. Uh, so from Brussels, uh, there's some of the others that have not yet uh, have not yet put in some events. Uh, we have Piton, of course, which is also in yeah, uh, which is also in Scarbeck near me. They are also, and then we have the amazing Birgham Bar, Birgham Bar, which is uh, uh, a little outside of Brussels, but very accessible. In fact, for me, it's about 15 minutes by train. I can get there. There's lovely walks in the woods next to there, and they're a lovely couple. Uh, Sebastian, he runs actually an online beer shop. That's how his background. And then he started this bar with, uh, really, it's full of international beers. Uh, he's got something like 20 taps as well, perhaps even more. Yeah. 
a wonderful uh, beer board that's electronic and you can really see uh, and it really features from all around the world. Okay. Uh, I've never been there. It's an yeah. amazing, amazing yeah. bar. Uh, we have uh, Brussels Beer Project, which we mentioned. We have Brasserie 28, which is uh, located right at Central Station. Uh, if you don't want to visit, uh, you know, um, what's that Scottish brewery? That made uh, the uh, brew dog. Brew dog. <laughs> brew dog. <laughs> right? There's brew dog right across from the station. But uh, Brasserie 28 is really amazing. They have a collaboration with uh, an Italian brewer. So they offer some of their own brews and the Citaran Brewer that they have a collaboration with. You go in there, it's a wonderful place to go after work. It's also if you're traveling through, uh, uh, through Central Station yeah, 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 en route, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lovely place to sit. They also have uh, live music at See, times, yeah. uh, really amazing uh, uh, but they, brewery. They didn't subscribe events yet. No. No. As far as we can see, and we're encouraging so, them to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And then, of course, one of my, La when Mule. I forgot, La Mule, of course, we have, uh, and they're very involved. Uh, they just celebrated, it's been a year and a half since Joel uh, and JV opened up, well, Joel opened up the brewery and uh, JV opened up the bar. They've been working it's together. It's a nice place. Uh, it's an amazing, yeah, it's just a dream yeah, to have a beer yeah, garden. Yeah. Uh, they uh, brew German style beers. Uh, it's really open outside, really lovely inside, good food, music, live music all the time. Uh, uh, an amazing place to visit. Yeah, definitely. I heard they are going to expand as well. Yes, they are expanding. Yeah. He's just bought uh, a few more tanks, yeah. uh, but it's not so much to produce more, it's just so much it's easier. And he's in a lovely uh, place, Galactery de Tram. You know, it's a tram station next door where the trams are stored, yep, but yep. Uh, it's, uh, you know, nearby there's an organic market inside. It's a really amazing place to It's visit. like La Sena. Yeah. It's a really industrial scene, actually, and, and yeah, I love to see the, in, yeah. yeah, and, and it's also, you, you see the trams lining up practically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And definitely. the beers are, of course, amazing, yeah, and both are lovely people. Always like that. Uh, we also have uh, amazing this year. We're really pleased because when I was uh, first came to Brussels uh, 12 years ago, I used to visit this place all the time because it's really like a tradition. It's right in the heart of the uh, near the Grand Place. Uh, which one? Uh, Theater de la Tune. Theater. Uh, by the yeah, 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 yeah. It's really like the tune. We know it as the tune. It almost went under a few years ago, but now they found support. And what they do is puppet shows while you drink beer. You can go in there during the week it's and drink beer, but they actually have the old style puppet thing. The stairs come down. Now they do it upstairs, so they have more space. So you're not. They don't have to stop the bar whenever they hold the theater things. And what what shows do they do? Oh, well, they'll do Shakespeare. They'll do traditional oh, yeah, with Flemish puppets. plays with puppets, and it's really really old style puppets we have uh, in antwerp we have the Pushenella kelder oh you yes. know it but there's one here yes i know the and kelder. they do actually also things with puppets uh -huh. but if you do a, a an event for for your company or something they always give some info before so they can really say like uh that guy who is always uh, you know, they give inside inf intel, so it's a really funny show. It's, it's, yeah. Oh, I didn't know there was a Pumzer yeah, Keller. Because yeah, yeah, really there's one here in Brussels, and I always wondered why they also had puppets hanging from the place. Oh, yeah. And good beers, that's, too. That's how it works. All right, so that, that I think, wraps up the Brussels. Uh, I don't think we missed anybody else who's on there. I hope so. Um, and otherwise, you should visit the website. Exactly. There's always exciting events the and whole week. And what around. do we have in Leuven? Uh, Leuven, we got hops and more. With the motto, enjoy, love, taste, share. Uh, we have, uh, if you go on idiots.beer, you'll find an interview with Cohen. Uh, it started by Jel Supli and Cohen Kostermans. They also uh, opened a new craft shop. Did they? Uh, that's what they say. Okay. Uh, well, that is the craft shop. Hop some more, right? 
It's oh, a shop probably, with some. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a craft store with with some taps. It's uh, cool. I think they've got about four or five taps, and of course you can sit there outside okay. on their terrace. I, I think they have a little place inside, and drink uh, either from the taps or s some of their many beers. Of course, it's also uh, what we call here a bottle shop, so you can take home some beers, and it's I, really. I hope you don't drink it from the taps, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glasses are the thing. Probably. Yeah. And, and what's one of the lovely traditions of Belgium, I think, is always fascinating. When you go into places, there's a glass for every beer. Yeah. It's always different. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. amazing. It's very nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They, and there's different shape. It's not like yeah. it's the same glass. I think I think the glass is sometimes more important than the beer. Sometimes. We won't say which ones. <laughs> And now, unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, my wife, uh, I have cupboards full of these glasses because, in a way, I can't help collecting them, especially when uh, Cora or one of the supermarkets have buy a case of beer uh, or six or seven beer or two, and you, and get, you get a free glass. You get a free glass. It's uh, because last year, the Paters Fatsche, we didn't yeah. talk in, in Antwerp, mm -hmm. they because they also subscribed this year, but also didn't already uh, submit an event. Uh, but they did a beer glass sellout. Oh. So it's a bar, you get, they really have like the list of, of 180 different, different Belgian beers. And I think because they, they already exist for like forever, I think their cellar is completely filled with, with different beer glasses. I would love to fall and down into that cellar. Yeah, because you really also have the, uh, like, Burkes, you know Burkes? No. It's the, you have Ribekes, it's the standard glass mm -hmm. where you put a beer in, like, uh, with the ribs on okay, the, on the yeah, bottom. It's like, a, like, it's like a, Ribekes. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have Elegantjes, which, which is the, the things on a, on a standard. And then you have the Burkes, which are completely uh, smooth. Wow, you've really uh, expanded my knowledge. Yeah, no, no, and and there you really have a lot of, of, of different glasses, and actually because you uh, you know Stella Artois, of course, yeah, absolutely. they had like uh, a golden ribbon Rim. around the glasses, yeah. and and the older they get, the the more expensive they get. It's it's yeah, it's yeah. also a scene actually. <laughs> and that's why, yeah, that's why sometimes I visit some of these uh, flea markets where yeah. people are just selling this, and I find some of these old glasses, like, oh, I really want fifty cents, yeah. fifty centimes. Um, that's because why your place. closet is full of glasses. <laughs> it's not because you get some free. It's because you buy them. <laughs> Fifty cents. You know, they're selling for like ten euros somewhere else. I threw a lot more of me. <laughs> you know, and you have a place in Antwerp, uh, Culminator. And Culminator. if you go there, you get uh, tickets. I still got tickets, and she's got a whole thing. And it's with so many tickets, you can get a free. Really but, ancient glass. Yeah, yeah, but Kulminator is also they're there forever as well yeah, because we it's hope. it's really it's uh, yeah it's an old it's couple an actually yeah. yeah and 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 also if you if you come by the door and you ring the door because they you I think get in, yeah. I think in 2010 or something before they they got uh, the title for best beer, beer bar, bar in the, the world. world yes absolutely and uh, it's too bad they didn't participate yet yeah. We should get them next year. Let's please. That's part of the culture, isn't it? And if you if you ring the door, you don't have to say, "Hey, I want to get wasted here." No, they don't, don't let you in. No, 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 no. You really have to say, "I want to try <laughs> some beers." Yeah, I need to That's try. That's what's lovely about them. <laughs> and if you try too many, suddenly uh, I forget his name. Oh, my back's hurting. I can't climb the ladder. So yeah, we. We asked the beer, which is you you get like a, a map of beers. It's like more than more it's than book, thirty yeah. pages. Yeah, it's really a book. And if you find the beer, like oh, I want to try this one, really exclusive. He says like, I'm going to look for it, <laughs> but please give me some time. And he goes in his cellar. He, he dives into his, his his cave. Like I don't I. 
I think it's it, yeah, it's well, unlimited it actually. Rows, yeah, rows and rows under the road. And eventually, and he comes with a bottle completely full of dust, dust. like <laughs> cobwebs. This is it. <laughs> so let's give a little roundup of. Uh, did anybody else a little roundup of? Uh, we're at five o'clock now. Of other places uh, participating, we have. Can you pronounce this? Bar Coureur, de Coureur. And that's also Kesselo. Kesselo, right? And that's, I think, close the to brewery. the brewery. And he's also participating. Uh, he's got an event uh, where you can visit, where Bart and any brew beer on a small scale. It's near Leuven. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's a bit hidden in a residential <coughs> area, and they're going to give you a little tastings, and uh, you visit a microbrewery. Yeah. I also, I think uh, Domaine Le Flank is a very nice thing to, yeah. to mention. Yes. Because uh, it's actually a wine, yes, a winery. There we go. In and Lede. In Lede. Lede, East Flanders. Yeah. And uh, it's well, a yeah, whole farm, right? It's it's a wine guard. Yeah. And they started doing things with beers. I I, I never visited as well because it's it's yeah I didn't have the we time have last to take, year. Well, let's do it together. Uh, but it's it's a winery and they they yeah they make beer events so it's very nice. And uh, I also think having an event the twenty third of August and then some other events as well. And also the the guys from Barn in Issa, yes, which is really yeah, it's it's not so far from the brewery. Who makes the Trappist? Uh, La Trappe, I think. Oh, La Trappe in the Yeah, it's, it's 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 I think it's in that area. Uh, and they have a yeah, they have a nice selection of the I don't know I don't remember the 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 name of the brewery. But they do, yeah, a, a tasting ensemble avec, avec some food and, and, yeah, also a very nice garden to sit in and everything. Yeah, very good. And close to that in Dam? In Dama. Dama. See, I'm That's bad. It's not that close because it's in West Flanders. It's close to Bruges, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's in Bruges. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what is going on? Can you pronounce that? It's, it's actually a festival. The Betere Bierproevers. Yeah. The better beer tasters, right. actually. Uh -huh. And they're hosting on the weekend, on August 27th, uh, 18 artisanal brewers, 80 different beers, uh, and an old army wet beers. Huh? So that should be an amazing, a festival within a festival, as we say. So we have Brussels Beer Fest, and we have... The better beer proofers. The better beer proofers. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that's associated with a brewery, all, uh, what's it called, uh, who's in that area. And then in Liège, can you tell us what's on in Liège? Uh, the Wild Lab Craft yeah, yeah. bar yeah. lounges in Liège. Which uh, Florent Malta, who's well known in the craft scene, uh, it's his home city. He was working here at different, uh, serving at different breweries, sorry, bars. And uh, it's not so far from the city, yeah. And uh, he boasts 14 taps and a wide selection of brews and a shop for takeaways. So, Wild Lab, wonderful place to visit. We love visiting him when we can. In Bruges, we have Bruges Beertje, yes, which is uh, a, uh it's a kind of like you, <laughs> Old. it's 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 a little bear. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> And we're great to have him on because Bruges is such a beautiful city to visit in the first place. It has many uh, traditional bars and we really welcome them for, uh, for coming on because, uh, you know, what would it's the so Belgian nice. beer yeah. culture without Bruges? Yeah, definitely. You and know? chocolate. And chocolate. Because that's also... And Kantklosse. You what's know Kantklosse? Kant no, it's Kantklosse. Ah, what is that? Kantklosse in English. It's like you have uh, the, the little... Uh, it's like cloth, uh -huh. uh, but you make it with, with a lot of threads. Oh, okay. It's like crochet or something? So something like that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's well, typical it's Bruges. It's the lace, Bobby. Oh, it's the lace. lace. It's the lace. Lace. Okay. okay. Yeah. 
But there's yeah. so much events, uh, Ahmed. We can't, we can't. We'll just finish up now. Yeah. Of course, we have to mention Boone, which is a bon. tradition. Boone. Sorry, I always call it Boone. And no I got problem. told off by Frank. No problem. <laughs> Himself, Frank Boone. Himself. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's not Boone. <laughs> When I was interviewing him, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and of course, we have a wonderful video, unfortunately. And, and of course, there are traditional Lambic Goes uh, Brewer, and they supply a lot of the other blenders and brewers, uh, Lambic Brewers. So we're really pleased. He's a legendary producer. He really revived the whole Lambic scene. You did a nice video about that yeah, also. Yeah, so two or three. If, yeah, maybe we can put the link somewhere and they'll yeah. and they'll yeah, see it. And, and they'll uh, see it. Yeah. And of course, if you walk through there, they've kept so much of the old equipment and things, so you can really see a history of Lambic brewing in. And what's that? It's important, eh? In yeah. the in the in the belt of of, of Brussels, eh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't clean your brewery. You get that's well, what makes the now yeast. Made yeah, to clean it because, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's wild yeast, spontaneous it's fermentation. An interesting process. Yeah, and a lot of brewers around yeah. the world have cottoned on to this. It's also, a kind of a beer that takes a bit of. Uh, let's say tasting several tastes before you can yeah. understand it and like it appreciate and it. we yeah. uh, really appreciate it i can drink and that's, it all day it's you the know, champagne of beer but the nice thing uh you have a cool ship you yes. know a cool ship the cool ship is where they what is a cool ship what is a cool ship in english we call it just the cool ship it's a cool it's, ship yeah because uh you know after you make the wart you put it out on this big kind of flat uh, Basin. Tray. It's like a tray, a huge yeah. tray, and you leave it overnight. It can only be done in certain uh, periods of the year, and uh, the wild yeast from the valley of the Seine River uh, uh, ferments. Uh, and they used to do it on the on the rooftops Brett. and everything, but yeah. that that that's not possible anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And who else? As we go through fast, uh, we have. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, we have yeah. plenty of more Ahmed, but uh, sure. we can't name them all. No. Uh, should we do any shout out to Hong Kong, Dieter? Do you, can you can you do some Hong? You know, just describe a bit about what's happening in Hong Kong. Uh, yes, yes, you come and sit here. I'll make some place. And uh, then we can end with that and thank people for. Uh, listening in. We went a bit over time, but uh, there was lots to talk about, we found yeah. out. All right, so, so... Tell us a bit about Hong Kong. Yeah, so Hong Kong, we, uh, we managed this year because we went uh, more international with the Belgian Beer Week to, um, to have also subscriptions in Hong Kong, uh, thanks to Kenneth Ho, who is uh, really active in the craft scene in Hong Kong. Uh, Kenneth Ho is a beer judge. He has uh, a day job as a marketeer. And another day job um, running his uh, his bottle shop, um, and yeah, in Hong Kong the scene is really like really close together. When you when you contact one person and you're like, hey, we have this concept, we want to uh, bring it also to to your country, of course. Yeah, then it's for them quite uh, quite easy to uh, to say, okay, they have general meetings and whatever. They come together to the same bars. Hong Kong is. Okay, it's not small, of course, but the scene there is uh, quite good connected to them all. Eh? Um, so we have tw 13 participants. Yep, we have 13 venues. So we have uh, Logicraft, which is a great uh, craft bar there. We have um, Hong Kong Brewcraft, also a brewery from there. And uh, the Cave Beer Point, and I think, if I can click on it, that this is the, the venue um, from... And a bit of time, yeah. The clicking is not working. Yeah, okay, that's the venue of um, of Kenneth. Eh? Okay. That's his bottle shop. Um, and also in Hong Kong, if you see the, the districts where we are, we are in the different regions. Eh? So the breweries are more on the upside of Hong Kong, more close to the mountains, um, than where the, the other events are in the city center more. Eh? So, so Cave Beer Point, yeah, that's his... Uh, so that should be really amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, people can really, and they're really putting on a show. I mean, what was surprising to me was the enthusiasm we had. You know, we've got like nine countries uh, participating outside of Belgium. Was the enthusiasm of say the 
the people from Hong Kong, the people from the UK. And I guess that comes down, I guess we should say a big shout out before we end to our ambassadors. We had yeah. Paul Davies in the UK. We had uh, Paul and Jakob in Poland, Kenneth Ho in Hong Kong. And we had uh, Doug Merlot that we saw in the live stream earlier uh, from Brazil, who managed also to get us more people from, uh, from Chile, from Brazil and Mexico and so on. Yeah, so all in all, look out for an exciting week ahead starting tomorrow ending next sunday and uh, we're going to be hanging around uh, you might see any one of us uh, at some of the places say hello to them and in really enjoy the culture the week and uh, we hope to see you there yeah beer idiots belgian beer week out <laughs> <laughs>